Mr. Krabs. Here we are. Just remember everything we practice and your date will go just fine. Good luck. Yeah, don't blow it. <laughs> Is that you, Eugene? Yes! Yes! Now our last Easter egg is a bit of a reach, I'll be honest, but hear me out, okay? In the episode of Squeaky Boots, Mr. Krabs begins to freak out, when he can't escape the sound of, well, squeaking. This drives our favorite crab crazy and gives us this scene, where Mr. Krabs turns blue and begins to hear and see the word squeak everywhere. He has a total meltdown. Well, this scene seems to be directly referenced in the episode Plankton's Paranoia. With this scene, even using the exact same music, just this time, instead of Mr. Krabs freaking out about hearing or seeing the word squeaks, he's tripping out over Plankton. Again, a bit of a reach with this one, but it uses the same music. I'm gonna play the both scenes with audio in a second. I didn't write that. Okay, so this next one could possibly be a coincidence, so let me know what your personal opinion is in the comments. We've heard Squidward jam out on his clarinet many times, and in the episode Squidbob Tentacle Plants, we hear him play a very specific tune. Well, this song seems to be referenced two seasons later in the episode No Pat for Hat, as when Squidward plays the clarinet, he plays the exact same track he performed in Squid Bob Tentacle Pants, thus making for a possible easter egg. They might have just reused the same clarinet track, but it also could have been a reference. We don't know for sure. Good morning, Squidward! And isn't it a lovely morning? Why are you playing the clarinet on your way to work? Imbeciles think that's entertainment? Well, brace yourselves for some true entertainment! Patrick? Yeah. Are you okay? I'm fine. Our next Easter egg can be found in the Season 9 episode, Bulletin Board. And I'm actually pretty proud of it. This is a cool one. In this episode, the Krusty Krab puts up a community bulletin board and lets customers use the board for feedback. Now, this episode is actually pretty good, but it's not the plot that matters. What actually matters is this Easter egg. In the classic episode, Uh, it's literally just titled Uh, there is a gag where Patrick, or well, Patar, his distant ancestor, puts salt on his hand and tries to eat it. It happens a couple times throughout the episode. Well, it seems this is referenced in Bulletin Board, as this exact same gag happens during this scene. You can see Patrick put his hand into his mouth, salt it, and put it back in. What a cool easter egg. Here's a clip. <laughs> He's brilliant. He's a diabolical genius, that's what he is. Mr. Krabs, the grill's gone cold. Nobody's ordering, son. Hello, I'm SpongeBob SquarePants, and I'm really looking forward to- Ooh, Squidward! I didn't know you were taking this class, too. <laughs> Our next episode with a cool Easter egg is Mandatory Music, another very new Season 13 episode. Hey guys, I'm proud of myself right now. These are all new ones. Now for you guys to get this one, let me give you some context. Here's the original clip that the Easter egg is referencing from the episode, Have You Seen This Snail? <laughs> Look who came to dinner. 
guess he didn't like nachos. Dude, poor Gary. Those snails actually look like some thugs. I was kind of scared for this dude's life. But anyways, as you've seen, there are these scary snails right here, okay? They appear in the scene I just showed you. Well, take a look at this scene from Mandatory Music, because these scary snails make their big return after a long time. It's been a couple of seasons since we've seen these guys. Take a look. <laughs> Hey, these boys are back and they're looking as scrappy as ever. And man, you know, Squidward isn't the best clarinet player, but his music is not that bad. These guys start fighting over it. But let's move over to another episode with more Easter eggs. Sheldon Plankton is quite the inventor with the innocent yet evil little guy creating all sorts of gadgets, weapons, and robots that are all usually used for one-off appearances in episodes. But there has been one invention of his that has popped up multiple times, and that's Robot Plankton. Making his first appearance in the second SpongeBob movie, the robot has appeared twice, with the most recent appearance being in the episode Plankton Retires. The design is pretty much identical, so I would personally say that this was an intentional easter egg by the art team. Who knows though? Here's a clip. The bunions are telling me it's time to stop gloating. Eh? Looks like you're falling apart at the seams. <laughs> huh? For me, sub, sub, a robot! Uh -huh. Victory dance, booyah! How would you be doing that when you're all the way over here in Dullesville, hmm? <laughs> because I'm a decoy look-alike robot! Gotcha! <laughs> Ooh, so what I miss. So back in the season one episode, The Chaperone, it is time for the annual Bikini Bottom High School prom, and Pearl is very, very excited to be taken out by her crush and date, and I believe it's even her boyfriend at the time, Octavius Rex, aka Mr. Long, Tan, and Handsome. However, this meanie ends up standing up Pearl, thus resulting in her going with Spongebob instead, a much better day to my opinion anyways. Don't worry though, Pearl gets her revenge later on in the episode, when she rejects Octavius' offer to dance, and chooses to dance with Spongebob instead. Now since this episode, Octavius has pretty much gone missing from the series, but this all changed in the episode The Goofy Newbie, as during this scene, he makes his return, with it being revealed that he now works at Goofy Goobers and hasn't really accomplished much in his life since. But hey, that's what he deserves for standing up our girl Pearl. Here's a clip. You look ridiculous! Oh. What is it? Get down, don't be as... It's my ex-boyfriend, Octavius Rex, a.k.a. Long, Dan, and Handsome. Meep. Whoa. Oh. Get Moss Pizza Topping! Can't you see I'm doing the sponge? Yeah, but the rule is only on the first break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and for lunch. <laughs> and on the second break, <laughs> for dinner. <laughs> wow! Ice cream all day! <laughs> In the episode, Nasty Patty, another classic SpongeBob episode, this episode is a banger, SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs are confronted by a health inspector who wants to try everything on the menu to see if everything is up to the health code. This guy's name is Health Inspector Yellowtail Andy. And to be honest, we haven't seen him much since this episode. He has appeared a few other times, but he's usually a different color. But recently, in the episode A Place for Pets in season 13, he made a big return, and he looks how he used to look, the way he looks in Nasty Patty. This was a really cool reference, and it's awesome to see such an iconic character return to the show, even though it was a fairly minor cameo. But anyways, here's a clip of both appearances with audio. Try the crunchy cow dog, sir. The butter barnacles are a touch of heaven. The powdered drift food is exquisite. Fresh sludge pudding. Or a diet red tie. Some fried fleas. Gentlemen. 
Oh, no! The health inspector! Oh, yes, the health inspector. And I'm afraid you can't run a restaurant and a feedlot out of the same building. <laughs> it's unsanitary. Back in the season two episode, I'm with Stupid, we learned a little bit about Patrick Starr's family. More specifically, Herb and Margie, two people that were revealed to be Patrick's biological parents, his mother and father. Now since this iconic episode, I love I'm With Stupid by the way, really good episode, both characters have been retconned and replaced by Bunny and Sissel via the Patrick Star Show. But let's just forget about that for a second, let's just forget that even happened. Now, as I said, back in the early days of the show, Herb and Margie were Patrick's parents, with their only appearance being at the ending of I'm With Stupid. However, this all changed, and the episode Rule of Dumb, as during this scene, we get the reappearance of both Herb and Margie, after years of being absent, thus making for a really cool reference to season 2. Hey, I wonder if these two will ever reappear again. Maybe they could make it so the Patrick Star Show takes place in an alternate timeline. They did it for Camp Coral with Sandy, so I don't know. Anyways, here's a clip. What I hold in my hands is a family tree that goes back centuries. It starts with the marriage of King Amoeba and Queen Mildew, then through a few inbred generations. Ends at you, Sir Patrick. Okay, so our last Easter egg is admittedly a bit of a reach, but I always like to include one of these in these Easter egg videos. Plus, it would make sense if this was a reference. Pay attention though, as it's kind of complicated. In the episode Boating Buddies, we get a very rare occurrence, and that is Squidward attending Mrs. Puff's boating school. Throughout the show's 13 seasons, this episode is the only time that this has happened, and it seems that this one-time thing was referenced in the episode Ditching, as at one point, Patrick says that he doesn't need to attend boating school since Squidward calls in sick all the time. Now, considering that Squidward has literally only ever gone to boating school once in the episode Boating Buddies, I'd say that this was a direct reference to the episode. But hey, what do you guys think in the comments? Let me know. It's all that I have. Well, you can have it again right after you complete boating school. Bow, 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 bow. Boating school. <laughs> oh, well. I'll be in boating school at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Oh, well, well, can't you just skip a day? J just call it sick. Always works for Squidward. And tarnish my reputation for never missing one day of school? I couldn't. So I will admit this last one could be a coincidence. So let me know what you think personally in the comments. But yeah, I'm like 90% sure this is an Easter egg. But let's get into it. In the episode, The Inside Job, there is a scene where Spongebob uses dish cleaning items to make a Krabby Patty. And in response, Plankton asks if soap is the special sauce. Well, this exact interaction seems to be referenced in the season 12 episode, Cookie Cooks, as at one point, Spongebob adds soap to some salads, while saying that he can't forget the special sauce. Again, this one could be a coincidence, but it does seem like an Easter egg if you ask me. Oh, now where are those patties? Oh, no, nah, uh yeah, mm. ah! There you are, Patty. Add one fluffy bun, like so, and a squirt of special sauce. <laughs> special sauce. Wait, soap is their special sauce? <laughs> How's this? <sighs> Oops, can't forget the salad dressing. Okay. And last but not least, our final Easter egg, or secret, can be found in the episode Patrick's Alley, which I will admit is a bit of a cheat since it's from the Patrick Star Show and not Spongebob, but eh, who cares, it's still really cool. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of Spongebob incidental characters, so I was pleasantly surprised when I seen Incidental 98 pop up in Patrick's Alley. This extremely rare incidental is known for his blue shirt with a heart on it, and he hasn't made an appearance since season 2. There aren't a whole lot of images of him, but this was definitely a really neat return of a highly requested incidental. Everyone wanted to see this guy back, so it's really cool. Oh, Patrick! You have 
Our next Easter egg revolves around the season 1 episode, Muscle Bob Buff Pants. After getting roasted by Sandy for not being as strong or fit, SpongeBob resorts to some interesting methods to prove her wrong, and purchases a new product he sees on TV known as Anchor Arms. These things are pretty much gloves that can be inflated with air to look like muscles, and SpongeBob is sold pretty fast after seeing the commercial with him ordering himself a pair so he can lie and flex on all of his friends. Well, this devious product is actually referenced in the Season 11 episode, Handemonium. Right at the beginning of the episode, we see the outside of Larry's gym, and if you look closely, there is graffiti that reads Anchor Arms are for Wimps, thus making a direct reference to the classic Season 1 episode. There's also another Easter egg here, but let me know in the comments if you spotted it. Are you a weakling? Built like a sponge? Well, now you too can have muscles. Huh? With anchor arms! They slip on like a glove. Just add air. How big do you want them? Normal? Baby? And for the ladies? Harry! Welcome everyone to the Secret Anchor Arm Wrestling Club! Oh, yeah! <laughs> the episode, One Course Meal, is all about Plankton, with us learning that he has an extreme, and I mean extreme, fear of Pearl, due to her being a whale. This is actually really funny, as it's scientifically accurate due to whales being able to consume about 15 tons of plankton in one single day. Plankton even references this at one point of the episode, thus making it even funnier, but anyways. Plankton's fear of Pearl was recently referenced in the episode The Ghost of Plankton. In this episode, the Flying Dutchman teaches Plankton how to be a ghost, and when he showcases his transformation skills, he turns into Pearl, and this scares the absolute heck out of Plankton. I think she's extra hungry today. Stay back, whale. I'm privy to what you do to organisms like me. I've seen those documentaries. Did he just go into the freezer? Don't say it. That should keep her out. <sighs> I want plankton meat. Holy protozoa. Karen, she's here. She got in. I'm a horrible thing. And poof. All right, I've saved the best for last, so let's head over to the episode My Two Crabses from Season 12. This episode actually has quite a few Easter eggs, but the most notable one takes place as Mr. Krabs frantically runs through his house naked and through his closet. If you look closely, one of the outfits he throws out of the closet is actually his cuddly crab uniform from the classic episode Bossy Boots. Pearl made the gang wear these uniforms all the way back in Season 2, so to see it referenced 10 seasons later is pretty cool. Don't be jealous, Uncle Squiddy. I made one for you, too. Don't bother. Only a fool would wear that. Alast, ye shipmates! Don't these just shiver your timbers? Get that suit on, sailor. It's already been paid for. Hey, 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 Mr. K, we don't want to see your booty today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we knew the experience. Here somewhere. Aha! Ooh, heaven warned it. When SpongeBob has to go up to the roof of the Krusty Krab, he ends up being too afraid to come down, thus giving us the episode Stuck on the Roof. Since he's the Krusty Krab's only fry cook, it's not long before they have to move the entire restaurant's operation up to the roof and convert it into a full-on second level. 
Squidward, being the grumpy man he is, chooses to stay on the first floor and class it up with some new decorations. And if you look closely, one of them is a recreation of his sculpture that got destroyed in the museum during the episode Are You Happy Now? A fun little Easter egg. Here's a clip. Oh, oh, time to go home already? shown in this oh, what the this 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 is my sculpture how did it get here oh you're just in time art lovers this is squidward tentacles creator of this piece Ooh, wow your work in a museum squidward yeah i can't believe it squidward! remember that time i dedicated a song to you You do remember. Our first set of sneaky Easter eggs can be found in the very new episode of SpongeBob Friend Aversary. This episode has a ton, and a lot of them take place during this scene when Squidward is trying to restore SpongeBob's memories of him. I'm just gonna name them off rapid fire and show clips from the episode as well as clips from the episodes they're referencing. So, first up is this one referencing one of my favorite episodes, the camping episode. I have the sense we're all in danger. Wow. Just a feeling! No. <laughs> SpongeBob, what are we gonna do? A sea bear is sure to come and eat us! Dude, that one is so cool. It's so nice to see the sea bear back, but guys, there's more. I'm gonna go a little more rapid fire now because there's a lot. There's also this reference to dying for pie where SpongeBob shows Squidward to fish on the beach. Such a cool scene. I'm gonna show my best friend Squidward to everyone in town wearing a salmon suit. Or how about this one from Bubble Stand, where SpongeBob teaches Squidward the bubble blowing technique. We're making bubble art. Watch carefully. First go like this. Spin around, stop. This other one's just as cool from Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost, where Squidward gets trapped in a bubble and is lifted upwards is really funny. There he goes! How high is he gonna go? All the way, Patrick. Up to the great beyond. Goodbye, friend! <laughs> Here's another one from an iconic episode, Fools in April. All right, all right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I admit it, I'm sorry. I like you. I like living next door. I like hearing your foghorn alarm in the morning and your high-pitched giggling at night. Squidward, is all that true? Yes, yes, SpongeBob. Even the part about the lima beans and the car chase? The what? The, yes, yes, whatever. <laughs> One more, it's from the episode Life Insurance, and it's all about when the sushi maker appears at the ending of the episode. We're trying to get jellyfish to sting us to prove we can't get hurt. They're the ones asking. Maybe you should get some life insurance. I bought some life insurance for Patrick and myself, and now we can never be hurt. To test out the life insurance, we even built a super dangerous obstacle course across the street. We call it the Sushi Maker. If this doesn't make you remember me, then nothing will. Nope, it's just not ringing up. Squidward. 
word. I absolutely love these types of references because they bring me back to the good old days, the Steven Hillenburg era of SpongeBob. Who knows what I'm talking about? Comment if you know what I'm talking about. But let's keep it moving and head over to another season 13 episode that is filled with Easter eggs. In the season six episode, The Krabby Chronicle, we get a cameo from a longtime fan favorite character that had been absent for some time. Now, back in Season 3, we got the iconic episode, Nasty Patty, an episode all about Mr. Krabs and Spongebob nearly killing an innocent health inspector. Now, this health inspector is named Health Inspector Yellowtail Andy, and after missing for a few seasons, he made his much-welcomed return in the episode The Krabby Chronicle. During this scene where he closes down the chum bucket after seeing an ad in the newspaper revealing that the food is legitimately made with chum. Ew. He even puts a giant out of business sticker on the chum bucket to really push the point. Fun fact, this episode is also where the health inspector's last name was first revealed to be Yellowtail. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, and also just saying, the character has made other appearances since the Krabby Chronicle, but this episode was his first reappearance in years. Here's a clip of the Easter egg with audio. Hey, this guy's not a zombie. He's just an ordinary health inspector. Yes. And at the risk of being hit again, I'd like to present you with this. Hey, Mr. Krabs, look! We passed the inspection! Hooray! Come on, everybody! Krabby Patties at half price! Well, not really. Oh, boy. I'd like a Krabby Patty. The chum stick that's finally gonna drive Krabs out of business! <laughs> I think not. I'm Health Inspector Yellowtail. I'm officially closing down your restaurant. That's not what this says. Plankton's chum made of your chums? The chum bucket serves your friends in more ways than one? What? Who's to blame for this? Who? Okay, so I know we already talked about this episode today, but let's head back over to Captain Pipsqueak for a second. Now, when we first mentioned this episode, I went over all of its cool references to past episodes, but I did leave one out, and this is due to it not being from a SpongeBob episode, but from a SpongeBob video game, and that's this blue little dude known as Prawn. Prawn made his first appearance in the SpongeBob video game, SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. Really good game that I'm actually going to be streaming on the channel soon. But yeah, it's really cool to see Prawn make his way over to the actual TV show. I wonder though, does this mean that SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom is now canon? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm curious. Prawn! Prawn! Did someone call? Oh, I thought maybe I was looking at superheroes, but now I see it's just a couple of pieces of gnarled driftwood. <sighs> Prawn! I'll never forgive you, you madman! What did Prawn do? The worst thing you can imagine. He put all of Mermaid Man's white clothes in the washer with a red sock. Everything I own turned pink! Pink! Oh, what is this? As I just mentioned, Spongebob Season 12 is absolutely filled to the brim with Easter eggs, and the episode Dreamhoppers is no exception. This is a bit of a different type of Easter egg though, as it isn't referencing an older episode, object, or character, but something from the show's history, something very important. Now, true Spongebob fans already know this, but back before Spongebob first aired in the late 90s, the show was originally going to be called Spongeboy instead of Spongebob and his design was a little bit different. Well, during this scene, where we see a few flashing images on a TV, an image of Spongeboy is visible for a split second, thus giving us a nostalgic callback to the show's origins. Really cool, and here's a clip. Spongeboy! 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 Spongeboy!
Our first Easter egg can be found in the episode Gary and Spot, and it references a classic episode from Season 2, that being the episode Dumped. In this episode, Spongebob gets his little heart broken, when his pet snail, Gary, wants to spend more time with Patrick than himself. So, to try and make little Gary jealous, Spongebob gets a new pet snail, named Larry, who is not only a lot uglier, but a lot meaner too, like this snail just sucks. At one point, Spongebob lets him sleep in his own bed, and he just ruins his bed. Now since the episode dumped, Larry has pretty much disappeared from the series, but he did pop up recently in the form of an easter egg as when Gary frees all of the creatures from the animal shelter in the episode Gary and Spot, Larry is one of them, thus making for a fun little callback to the show's second season, one of my favorite seasons. Here's a clip with audio. Come on, let me show you around. Larry, Larry, I present to you dinner time. Ta-da! Bon appetit, Larry. <laughs> One of the more heartwarming Spongebob episodes is Season 12's Spongebob's Big Birthday Blowout, an episode dedicated to the late, great Steven Hillenburg, but also an episode that celebrates the show's history. In other words, the episode is full of cool easter eggs, so much so that it would take forever to fit all of them into this video. So for now, let's just focus on one. In the episode, I had an accident, Spongebob becomes depressed after a sandboarding accident and begins to just hide in his room all the time, refusing to leave. Now to combat this, at one point, Sandy gets Patrick to attack her while wearing an ape suit, in the hopes of luring Spongebob out of his house. And this is actually directly referenced in Spongebob's Big Birthday Blowout, as during the meeting scene, we can see these ape masks directly referencing Patrick dressing up as an ape in I Had an Accident. Talk about an awesome easter egg that references my favorite era, the Steven Hillenburg era of Spongebob. Hey Sandy, who's your friend? But, but you're supposed to be in the gorilla suit. I am in the gorilla suit. I thought I was doing a pretty good job. Then who's that? Ah, a real gorilla? Huh? <laughs> Let's watch their strange rituals. As a lot of our longtime viewers know, Season 1's Pizza Delivery is one of my favorite, all-time favorite episodes, with it being all about Spongebob and Squidward going on a little pizza delivery adventure, and doing everything they can to get this box of pizza to its destination. Now, I don't know if the Krusty Krab still serves pizza to this day, but it is possible, considering that a Krusty Krab pizza box did pop up in a recent episode as an easter egg. It's easy to miss, but in the episode Plankton Gets the Boot, a Krusty Krab pizza can be seen in Spongebob's house, when he and Plankton are watching a movie in the living room. Pretty cool, huh? Now, you probably can notice there are a bunch of other easter eggs in the shot, but I'm gonna leave you guys to find them, so leave a comment what other easter eggs are in this shot. Anyways though, here's that clip. Hi there, Krusty Krab, how can I help you? Pizza? Of course we have pizza. Every squid will bring it right over. <laughs> Mr. Kraft, we don't serve pizza. <laughs> Many unbearable hours later. 
Oh my love. What a fool I've been. You've always been the only one for me. In the season 2 episode, Survival of the Idiots, Spongebob and Patrick overhear a dream Sandy has about fighting two very popular Western criminals, Dirty Dan and Pinhead Larry, and eventually take on both personas as they play Cowboys and Bandits. Now this eventually results in both Pinhead Larry and Dirty Dan getting their butts absolutely handed to them, like they get their butts kicked and presumably killed thus giving us these two gravestones, with the names Pinhead Larry and Dirty Dan on them. Well, these gravestones are referenced in the episode Shopping List, as both can be seen during this scene, thus making for a heartwarming little easter egg for all of the longtime fans like myself. Here's a clip with audio. on Mr. Crab's list is hair from a Yeti crab? Well, that hairy hermit dwells right here on this mountaintop. <laughs> okay, SpongeBob, you can be Dirty Dan. I just want to be Patrick. Let's get out of here before Sandy wakes up again! In the Season 3 episode, Idiot Box, Spongebob gets a brand new TV. But rather than use said TV, he gives it away to Squidward, just so he can play around in its box, along with Patrick. Why, you may ask? Well, because Spongebob plans to use his imagination. This scene where Spongebob says the word imagination, along with rainbows, is iconic, and it actually is referenced in the Season 10 episode of Cuddle E Hugs. Just this time instead of Spongebob doing it, it's Sandy. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't you two have any brains? Squidward, we don't need television. Not as long as we have our imagination. Wow, I never thought of it that way. Imagination. I can be anything I want. A pirate. I. A football player. A, a starfish. Oh, I'm sorry, SpongeBob, but I don't see anyone. He's the giant hamster right there. Oh, I get it. He's your imaginary friend. But he's not imaginary. He's real. Oh, no need to get so- So this first Easter egg actually references not only a classic season 2 episode, but also the iconic first Spongebob movie from 2004. The episode, Call the Cops, primarily takes place in a prison, due to the plot of the episode revolving around Plankton going to jail. Well, throughout the jail, there are a few wanted posters, with this one showing the Tattletale Strangler from the classic episode Spongebob Meets the Strangler, and another one showing Dennis from the first Spongebob Squarepants movie, thus making for two really cool easter eggs that both reference the Steven Hillenburg era of the show. Here are some clips. Sesame seed. Not on my watch. Sir, I will have you know it's against the law to litter. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Call the police? <laughs> well, if it isn't little Helen the felon. Good work, boys. You nabbed the most notorious criminal in Bikini Bottom. Huh? This sweet little thing? While I look for the formula, you can interrogate the suspect. Well, I don't know how to interrogate. Then just ask questions. And act tough. Um, qu 
questions and a tough got it. Our last Easter egg can be found in the episode Boating Buddies. In this episode, instead of the typical SpongeBob Boating School episode, is all about Squidward attending boating school after getting a ticket. As you can imagine, this was all SpongeBob's fault, of course. But luckily for him, SpongeBob decides to help out, eventually leading us to this scene where Squidward does his driving exam. For a few frames, the rare incidental character Granny appears, thus making her first appearance since her debuted episode, Have You Seen This Snail? I'm going to show you guys a clip, but before I do, I just want to say thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. I'm Cartoon Cory, and leave a comment down below letting us know other cartoon mistakes you want us to cover in the future. For now, though, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, make sure to subscribe. If you subscribe, I'll give you a cookie, a chocolate chip cookie. It'll be yummy. All right, peace. Just let's go on it! Uh -huh. Hooligans! Ah! There you are. Miss Tufsy, oh grandma finally So who here is familiar with this character? This character is named Granny and she along with Miss Grusselpuss are both pretty rare in terms of incidentals. They don't show up very often. Well, they make a slight cameo in the episode Grandma's Secret Recipe, as both characters appear while Spongebob and Great Grandma are knitting. This isn't necessarily the most mind-blowing easter egg or cameo, I'll admit, but hey, it's pretty cool. So I guess this next one is less of an easter egg and more of a theory. In the episode Food Con Castaways, Spongebob and the gang find themselves lost in a random forest. Now throughout the episode, the forest isn't given an actual name, but a lot of people online speculate that this could be Kelp Forest, the same forest from the iconic season 3 episode Club Spongebob. We don't know for sure. But if you need some more proof, it seems the title card for Food Con Castaways is taken from a background scene of Club Spongebob. Interesting, huh? Here's a clip from the episode with audio. Talk about a cool Easter egg. Sad clowns. Sad. Clowns. What was that? I was already here. <laughs> Another cool easter egg can be found in the episode Biddy Sitting. Well, to be honest with you guys, the entire second half of the episode is essentially an easter egg, as it features two classic characters. In the episode Chocolate with Nuts, Spongebob goes door to door with Patrick, lying to people about their magic chocolate bars and eventually come across this dynamic duo, Incidental 87, aka Mary, and her mother. Well, Mary has shown up a few times over the years since her debut, but her mother has been absent ever since Chocolate with Nuts, that is, until a few years ago, as she plays a major role in the episode Biddy Sitting, and it is a major nostalgia trip. Here's a clip. What? What are they selling? Chocolates! What? Chocolate! I can't hear you! They're selling chocolate! They're selling chocolate? Yeah! Chocolate. I remember when they first invented chocolate. <laughs> well, you go out and dance and revel. <laughs> we watch your little devil. <laughs> I found a baby. <laughs> it's the ugliest baby I've ever seen! SpongeBob Season 5 isn't a bad season, but it definitely isn't the best. However, there is one Season 5 episode that I actually really enjoyed, and that's The Donut of Shame. This episode is very short, I think it's only like 4 or 5 minutes, but it's sweet and features a hilarious plot where Patrick panics due to accidentally eating SpongeBob's donut after a late night of partying. Well, this episode is referenced in the Season 9 episode, The Executive Treatment. 
It happens very fast, but during this scene, Patrick begins to freak out about the donut before, well, being insulted by Squidward. This one, you kind of have to hear it for it to really make sense, so I'm going to show a clip. Before I do, though, I just want to say thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. I'm Cartoon Cory, and leave a comment down below letting us know other cartoons you want us to cover on the channel. Heading into the summer, we're going to start branching off from just Spongebob. But anyways, here's those clips. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Was great. The donut is gone. The donut is gone. Our first Easter egg can be found in the season 12 episode, The Knitwitting. There are actually a few found in this episode, so like, let's just get right into them. As SpongeBob mobily walks through this alley, there are a bunch of references to older episodes. My favorite of the bunch is this graffiti drawing of Doodle Bob referencing the iconic season 2 episode Frankendoodle. More importantly though, is this graffiti reading Squidward Smells, as this is a reference to one of my personal favorite SpongeBob episodes, Sailor Mouth. There are a few other small references, but these two are definitely the best of the best. Leave a comment down below letting me know any that I missed. Anyways though, here's a clip of the Easter eggs with audio. Aw, <laughs> oh, look at him. Ain't he a doll? All he needs is a tie. <laughs> Ready for action! Quack! 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 Nematodes are people too! Ha, oh, those nematodes! Here's one somebody didn't finish! Squidward smells. Good. Ah! Can you help find me? I'm pretty. Weirdo! <laughs> Something absolutely terrible happens in the season 4 episode, All That Glitters. SpongeBob breaks his favorite spatula. And as you can imagine, this really ruins SpongeBob's day. Don't worry though, at the very end of the episode, we get this hilarious scene of SpongeBob being reunited with his old friend, and the episode ends with everything back to normal. Now the Easter egg in question can be found during this scene, and it has to do with everyone's favorite incidental, Fred. If you're a true SpongeBob fan, you'll know that this isn't the first time we've seen Fred in this outfit as it's actually a reference to the outfit he wears in the classic season 3 episode, One Crab's Trash. Here's a clip. I would give serious consideration to a replacement spatula. Oh! Uh-uh, there. Touchy, touchy the lace spatula. It's very, very expensive. I'm sorry. Of course, if you purchase this fine item, you may hold it. Uh, 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 sir, I'll give you a million dollars for that hat. <laughs> the episode, 20,000 Patties Under the Sea, has an Easter egg in its title. For those who may not know, the title is a reference to a Julie Verne novel, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. That's not the only easter egg present in this episode though. The con man from the episode Chocolate with Nuts is back again, and he cons Spongebob and Patrick once more. Now after he cons Spongebob and Patrick, he says hey, thanks again guys. This means he remembers the characters from the last time he conned them. Another cool thing you may not have known about this episode is that Gene Simmons from the band Kiss plays the sea monster in the episode. Pretty cool. Are you sure you don't want to be our first customer, sir? Uh... Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Wait! We'll pay ya! Hey, thanks again, guys. Good luck with the restaurant. Thank you, sir. Come again. It's specially designed to cradle each candy bar in velvet-lined comfort. But <laughs> I'm wasting my time. You don't need these bags. We need them! We need them! We need them. We need them. Mm -hmm. 
So long, boys. Happy hunting. <laughs> Suckers. One of my favorite SpongeBob episodes is season three's Just One Bite. In this episode, Squidward tastes his very first Krabby Patty, and though he lies and claims to hate them at first, by the end of the episode, we find out the truth. SpongeBob reveals that there is a patty vault hidden in the Krusty Krab that contains hundreds of Krabby Patties. And in the ending scene, we see Squidward break into this place to get his fix. Now aside from this episode, we haven't really seen the Patty Vault since. However, it does appear in the episode Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 6 in the form of an Easter egg. It's only on screen for a short amount of time, but it can be found during this scene. Yeah, here's a clip. There it is. Shrimp! I don't know where to start. But all that matters is that it's just you and me and nobody. Squidward? Is that you? Flops, home to over five billion Krabby Patties. What evil mastermind would dare infiltrate this fortified fort and make off with his treasure? It is I, Kelp Thing. Do what I do. Stop! You can't do that. Forbidden! The next Easter egg on this list comes from the season 5 episode, To Love a Patty. This episode focuses on Spongebob falling in love with a Krabby Patty. Spongebob is so in love with this Krabby Patty that he saves the burger from being eaten. But take a look at the person who is about to eat the Krabby Patty. Does he look familiar to you? Well, if you're a true Spongebob veteran, he should. This is the same fish who briefly appears in the episodes Shanghai and Krabby Land. In Shanghai, the fish is seen through the Flying Dutchman's telescope, and in Krabby Land, he is one of the fish who helps Spongebob stall the kids. Here's a clip of the Easter egg with audio. Where's my Krabby Patty? I'm here, muzzle boy. It's about time! Let's see who we can find. Captain, there's a guy we can scare. I had four biscuits and I ate one. Remember this, Squidward? Okay, so your boy cartoon Cory kind of just lied to you because we're actually heading back to Friendiversary. This episode, guys, has so many Easter eggs that I'll probably be covering it in future videos because, like, the ones I'm mentioning today, there's so many more. But anyways, all of the references or Easter eggs have to do with Squidward's memory book, as this thing is filled to the brim with references to previous episodes. For example, on the first page, we can see the baby Squidward design from the episode Goo Goo Gas. Here's a clip. <laughs> oh, gross! And there's more. The second and third pages are both references to Camp Coral and the Patrick Star Show, which is pretty cool, but the next reference that I really like is on the fourth page, which references the episode Truth or Square, where it shows a picture of SpongeBob's pineapple being sold, even having Squidward in the exact same hat from the scene. And hey, look, Incidental 49A is even chilling in the background, just like the original scene. Here, take a look. Secret garden is finally done. It's beautiful. I'll take it. Hi, neighbor. I'm SpongeBob SquarePants. 
and we're going to be bestest friends. The references don't end there, as on the fifth page, we can see two concept designs from the SpongeBob SquarePants Pitch Bible. So these are very, you know, concept art-esque pictures of SpongeBob. They're very interesting, but let's keep it going because on the sixth page, take a look at this picture referencing the episode Employee of the Month. Really cool. Here's a clip from the episode that it's referencing. Mr. Krabs gives you that award so you'll work harder for no extra money. That is not true, Squidward. You could win it too if you tried harder. Oh, for what? To get my face on the wall of shame? Squidward, you've got it all wrong. Like I said, Friendiversary has a lot of Easter eggs, guys, and we'll be covering the episode more in future Easter egg videos. But for now, let's head over to our last SpongeBob episode of the day. Let's keep it moving. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but it seems that Nickelodeon really turned up the Easter eggs in season 12, as there are so many. One episode that comes to mind is Lighthouse Louie. In this episode, SpongeBob finds himself stuck cleaning Mrs. Puff's boating school lighthouse, which is full of a bunch of junk seen over the years throughout the show's history. Now, during this scene, where SpongeBob falls into a pile of trash, we get a close-up look at one of these pieces of junk. I'm talking about this familiar-looking pizza box that I'm sure all of you recognize. That's right, this is yet another reference to one of my all-time favorite Spongebob episodes, Season 1's Pizza Delivery. You know, I've always wondered if the Krusty Krab is still serving pizza, and hey, this pretty much confirms it. Here's a question though, which toppings would you get on your Krusty Krab pizza? Let me know in the comments. Anyways though, here's a clip of the Easter egg. <laughs> Our next Easter egg can be found in the season 13 episode, Upturn Girls. And trust me, I know, I know, we've covered or talked about this episode a lot of times this year, but it's due to the episode having a ton of cameos and references. But guess what? I found another one. Back in season 5, we were introduced to the original fry cook, Jim, of course in the episode The Original Fry Cook, who due to his celebrity status, shows up to the Krusty Krab in this unique all gold limousine. This guy is like rich, he's just styling and profiling. Now since season 5, we haven't seen Jim very much, however he is definitely still out there, as his limo actually appears in season 13's Upturn Girls with it appearing outside of Lady Upturn's shop. Hey, I wonder if Jim's inside. Here's a clip. Will I be cooked in butter? It's Jim, the original fry cook. Crabs. This is my favorite department store. and like the heart of the big city. <laughs> Uptoons. All right, get ready as our first Easter egg is quite the doozy. In the recently aired SpongeBob episode, Captain Pipsqueak, Plankton comes up with the ultimate plan to join the League of Evil so that he can take over the world and of course, steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. Well, in order to do this, Plankton has to do an addition. And during this scene, we see numerous villains from previous episodes show up for an addition as well. And boy oh boy does it make for an epic scene full of references. First up is Dennis from the first Spongebob movie. Then there's this guy, a thug who steals the paddy wagon, also from the first movie, a prisoner from numerous modern Spongebob episodes, Dr. Negative, Squidward's villain counterpart from the episode Mermaid Pants, really good episode by the way. There's also Madame Hagfish, the earworm, Robot Mantis, Nosferatu, Gordon the Viking, Dorsal Dan, and my favorites, The Strangler from the episode Tattletale Strangler, and Doodle Bob from the episode Frank and Doodle. That is like 12 to 13 references in one scene. Crazy. 
Here, let's take a look at all of them with audio. Do you sign in and wait your turn? Get out of the car, fellas! Take all your money and put it in the bag! No, Mr. Bob, I expect you to fry! <laughs> I am the Strangler! I'm the Strangler! <laughs> to be or line? <laughs> The season 10 episode, SpongeBob's Place, has a good plot, but I think the biggest thing this episode is known for is all of the wild Easter eggs. Now I'm not going to cover this scene, which has like 8 plus Easter eggs all in one shot like holy cow, as we've covered it quite a few times already, but I did find another one, and it's spicy. Remember the nasty patty that Spongebob and Mr. Krabs prepared in the season 3 episode of the same name? Yeah, well, it appears again for the first time in a long time during this scene. There are some slight differences, but this was definitely a throwback to season 3, and I absolutely adore it. Here's a clip. <laughs> Why, that's the most diabolical Krabby Patty ever spawned! I call it... The nasty patty. <laughs> hey, hurry up with that patty. Here you are, sir. Enjoy. Ah, hello, delicious. I see the problem. SpongeBob's not in the kitchen. <laughs> We've seen plenty of board games in the SpongeBob universe, whether it's Sailor Mouths, Eels in Escalators, or Patrick the Game from Season 9. But one of my favorites is the Flying Dutchman's Treasure Hunt from the Season 1 episode, Arg. This game nearly drives Mr. Krabs insane, with him eventually taking things way too seriously and using the game's map for a treasure hunt. To be fair, Mr. Krabs' plan does actually work, and they eventually find the treasure by the end of the episode, despite using a map from a board game. But this was the last we'd see of the board game for a little while. That was until the Season 6 episode, Toy Store of Doom, as at one point, Spongebob takes the Flying Dutchman's Treasure Hunt board game out of a chest, and asks Patrick if he wants to play it, only for him to decline it like everything else Spongebob suggests. Pretty cool, huh? Really cool. I love Easter eggs like this. Here's a clip. Look, Patrick! Eight gold doubloons! Wait, I saw it first! Yeah! Mine! Mine! Huh? Boy, Mr. Krabs, you sure are sweaty. What's this? Where are the doubloons? It's a game! The Flying Dutchman's Treasure Hunt. Looks like you've shanghaied me. My turn. Five. <laughs> One of your shipmates has been a bad pirate. Send him to the brig. Well, I guess we could play something. <laughs> How about a yo? No. Yo. Buried treasure board game? Moving on, our next easter egg can be found in the episode Pat Nokio, and just like the last section, they both reference the first Spongebob movie from 2004. During this section of the movie, a depressed Spongebob goes to the Goofy Goober's nut bar and meets up with Patrick before they both devour their triple Gooberberry sunrises and cover Walter the waiter with ice cream. This was the last time we'd hear of a Gooberberry sunrise or hear from Walter the waiter for like nearly 14 years, but both actually show up in Patnokio, thus giving us a total nostalgia trip. Heck, even Walter gets covered in ice cream again, and it's a gooberberry sunrise that gets tossed at him. Pretty cool, huh? Here's a clip. Yum! Oh, triple gooberberry sunrise, huh? Well, I guess I could use one of those. Now you're talking! Hey, waiter! We need another one over here. There you go. Ooh. Number two, ice cream. In the episode.
episode, Mermaid Man vs. Spongebob, the Krusty Krab introduces a new promotional item that collaborates with Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, known as the Krusty Kids Meal. This thing even comes with a Mermaid Man toy, so you know that the superhero duo's biggest fan, Spongebob, got his hands on one. Well, we know for sure now, after the episode Appointment TV, as in the episode's intro, Spongebob has one of the Krusty Kids Meals on his shelf. Talk about a true collector. Here's a clip. Yep. Ooh, I just love the little pipsqueak patty, small fries, and cold juice product. Everyone loves the new Krusty Kids Meal. And for a limited time, get your free toy inside. How can I be evil with flavors this good? Until they found a copy in the producer's underwear drawer. It's Two of the two-part special, <laughs> the case of the curious cliffhanger. Well, I've rearranged the living room for optimal TV viewing. So I'll admit that this last one is a little bit iffy, but in the episode Just One Bite, we see SpongeBob throw on these spicy reading glasses as he pages through a dictionary. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this is a direct reference or not but it seems that Spongebob wears these exact same glasses in the episode Stanley as Squarepants. I don't know for sure, but they're pretty much identical, like they are identical. Leave a comment though, do you think they're the same glasses? And do you think that this is a direct Easter egg? Leave a comment. Sorry, I don't- I've never had a Krabby Patty. Those words, is it possible to use them in a sentence together like that? I've never had a Krabby Patty, I've never had a Krabby Patty, I've never had a Krabby Patty. <laughs> Here it is. Dear SpongeBob, I'm sending your cousin Stanley to live with you. He can't hold down a job and he ruins everything he touches. I can't take it anymore. Maybe you can straighten him out. Love, Uncle Sherm. Well, you're always welcome here, Stanley. My pineapple is your pineapple. Wow, you've got your own refrigerator. So in the world of SpongeBob, it seems that everyone wants a pet snail with them pretty much serving as dogs or cats. Heck, even Squidward gets one at one point. Remember Snelly? Well, one snail that is often forgotten is Mrs. Puff's pet snail, Annette. She made her first appearance in the season three special, The Sponge Who Could Fly, but sadly has not been seen much since, aside from a few video game appearances. Well, this all changed in the season 12 episode, My Two Crabses. During this scene, we can see that Mrs. Puff has a picture of Annette in her house, thus making for a neat little reference. I do wonder though, what happened to the snail? Like, does Mrs. Puff still have her? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. But for now, here's a clip. Please help, my snail is up a tree. I've had her since I was a little girl. But now it looks like the end of her world. No! Gotcha! Next time, try the elevator. Thank you, Bert. You just need to get the hang of it. Yeah, almost got it. You know, Patrick, I think you have gravity trouble. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, this next one is very quick and takes place in the episode Ride Patrick Ride. Another new episode, you know. Like I said, I'm very proud of this. All new episodes. But I will admit this one might be a little bit of a reach. So here's the clip that the Easter egg is referencing first. It takes place in the episode The Secret Box. I love this episode. It's iconic. And it has to do with SpongeBob and Patrick's best friend flashback. If you ever come near my secret box again, we won't be friends anymore! We're supposed to be friends forever. <laughs> okay, so this bike right here, remember it. It's important, as it seems that it's referenced and reappears in Ride Patrick Ride during this scene. You need something to help you focus. Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, it's working, Patrick. 
How cool is that? It's awesome to see that SpongeBob is still using the same bike that he used like 22 years ago back in the iconic episode. It's crazy. But as always, let's keep it moving to another episode with more Easter eggs. Trust me, this next set of Easter eggs are going to be very nostalgic. SpongeBob has encountered a ton of interesting pets throughout the show's 13 seasons, ranging from other pet snails to even a pet seahorse. Well, there's a little callback to this in the episode The Clam Whisperer. I believe it's from season 12, as when SpongeBob is seen following some clams, three classic pets can be seen drinking out of a river with straws. Larry the Snail from the season 2 episode, Dumped, Rex the Worm, also from the same episode, Dumped, and finally, Mystery the Seahorse from the episode My Pretty Seahorse. It's cool to see all of these pets show up all in one episode for one Easter egg. Here's a clip. Who needs worms anyway? Welcome home, newest best friend! Come on out, don't be shy! Hi guys! Say hello to my new pal, Rex! Because of her mysterious behavior, I have decided to name her Mystery. This next one also has to do with our favorite seahorse, Mystery. So let's skip the plot summary and get right into the Easter egg as Mystery makes a really cool, and I mean really cool cameo, in the episode Gary and Spot, and can be seen during this dance party scene. Oh, also, the classic character, Pluffy Fluffy, from the episode A Pal for Gary, you might remember it like turns into a monster, also makes an appearance in this episode, and can be seen in this cage during this scene, thus making for another nostalgic Easter egg. is Puffy Fluffy, and he'll keep you company while I'm at work. You two get to know each other. I'll be right back. Hey, this is my jam! They say that music soothes the savage beast. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, but sometimes yeah. it works on knucklehead too. That's how you do it, you do it, you do it. <laughs> Gary and Spot are on a mission to save their pals. Okay, and last but certainly not least, our final Easter egg can be found in the episode The Ballad of Filthy Muck. This episode is all about Patrick going out of his way to become the most grossest and stinkiest person in all of Bikini Bottom. But more importantly, the episode also has a really cool easter egg. If you look closely, during this scene, an ice cream sign at Glove World says Glove Flavor. And though this might seem like nothing, it's actually a reference to the candy glove flavor that Spongebob literally ate in the iconic episode Rock Bottom at the location of the same name. He actually hates this flavor, so yeah. Getting hungry. Glove candy dispenser. Good thing I went to Glove World. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Ew, glove flavored. Hey, what's that? Candy machine. But you two stink! <laughs> When SpongeBob has to go up to the roof of the Krusty Krab, he ends up being too afraid to come down, thus giving us the episode Stuck on the Roof. 
Since he's the Krusty Krab's only fry cook, it's not long before they have to move the entire restaurant's operation up to the roof and convert it into a full-on second level. Squidward, being the grumpy man he is, chooses to stay on the first floor and class it up with some new decorations. And if you look closely, one of them is a recreation of his sculpture that got destroyed in the museum during the episode Are You Happy Now? A fun little Easter egg. Here's a clip. Oh, oh, time to go home already? shown in this oh, what the this 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 is my sculpture how did it get here oh you're just in time art lovers this is squidward tentacles creator of this piece Ooh, wow your work in a museum squidward yeah, i can't believe it in the episode girls night out sandy invites karen and mrs puff to celebrate her latest scientific achievement the other two ladies are having a rough week dealing with the annoying men in their lives, namely Plankton and Spongebob. So Sandy suggests that they use their girls' night out to pull some pranks on them and get some much, much needed revenge. Now the funniest prank that they pull is putting a virtual reality helmet on a sleeping Spongebob to fool him into thinking he's gotten his driver's license in a new driving boat. Now if you look closely, we've seen this license before. We've seen it in two other episodes, Sleepy Time and No Free Rides, and it even has the exact same expiry date of December 14th, 2003. So this was definitely an Easter egg. Here's a clip. Oh, can I help you? Hello, Mr. SpongeBob. I'm just here to deliver your driver's license. Congratulations. Oh, uh, thanks. I Your new boat! My new boat! Oh, wow! <laughs> Wait a minute! I don't have a driver's license! <laughs> wow! My driver's license! I can't believe it! I should take a good picture! And the way you pulled the anchor out? Genius! I never thought I'd say this, but here's your driver's license. In the 20th episode of Season 9, SpongeBob joins a notorious gang known as the Sharks, a Greece-inspired group of, well, sharks who break the law and wear cool leather jackets. Now, due to the fact that this group is a legitimate street gang, it would make sense for the Sharks to spray paint or tag their logo throughout Bikini Bottom. And it seems they did, as during the episode Whirly Brains, when SpongeBob and Patrick sneak up on Mr. Krabs and Mrs. Puff, you can see the Sharks logo spray painted on one of the walls. It's a pretty cool Easter egg. Here's a clip. Might finally be the day that yes, Eugene. Are they still a little kiss? Oh, 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 Eugene! I thought you'd never ask. Come here, you. What a bloody old Eugene! Wow! And we are. The Shells! Ooh, fancy stitching! I don't want it, goes! Patrick White! Hey, look, Patrick! You just lost a tooth! And last but not least, the final episode we'll be covering today is Ain't That the Tooth, another new episode. Man, I've got all of the new episodes today, and it's awesome. But this episode also has tons of Easter eggs, and they're really cool, guys, and very nostalgic. Now, the first one references one of my favorite classic episodes, which is My Pretty Seahorse. So take a look at the outfit Patrick is wearing right here. He's wearing this fresh purple sweater. My boy is dripping right now. Well, this is the exact exact same sweater that Patrick wears in My Pretty Seahorse. Pretty cool. Here's a clip of him wearing the sweater. A quick survey of his environment, and he knows that it's spring! 
the starfish then sheds his winter coat and stores it away safe for winter. Patrick ain't the only one that's wearing an outfit that's a callback to an older episode, as look at Spongebob's fit in this scene, my boy is dripping, and this is a reference to the episode Just One Bite, as it's the exact same outfit that he wore in Just One Bite. Here's a clip from that episode. But all that matters is that it's just you, and me, and nobody! Squidward? Is that you? Spongebob, uh, 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 what are you doing here? I always come to work at 3 a.m. This is when I count the sesame seeds. Okay, last one for the day, guys. And this one's really cool, as in this scene, we get a look at Mr. Krabs' house, as you can see right here. Here's a clip of it. Hey! That's where Mr. Krabs lives! Watch out for booby traps. I helped Mr. Krabs install the security system myself, so... Here's one! Hold this moment! Patrick! <laughs> Oops. Now you may have noticed something, that being all of the memorabilia that references Wet Painters, another iconic episode of Spongebob. Guys, all of these episodes have so many Easter eggs, and again, I love the types of Easter eggs that reference the old days of Spongebob, seasons one, two, and three, the good stuff. But that's it for today's video, guys. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do more Easter egg videos. This was a lot of fun. You know what's also cool though? Mistakes, guys. So you should check out this video right here on screen, where we talk about tons of mistakes in Spongebob that you missed. It's a ton of fun, so click on this video. Also, if you're new to the channel and you want to talk to Cartoon Cory, make sure to subscribe as I respond to the comments of all subscribers. But yeah, thank you so much guys for watching. Shout out to the Grapple Gang, the Premiere Gang, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace!